All right, EA Sports, uh, this video is not gonna just be like a rant or an attack. That's not what I'm trying to do here, but can you please stop putting mutt in my face 24 seven? I'm here to play franchise, and I know not everyone plays franchise. Most people don't, but not everyone plays mutt either. I don't care about this, and I like Randy Moss, and I think it's cool to see him in a Vikings uniform again, even as a Lions fan. But you know what I wanna see in this screen instead? I wanna see my franchise players. I wanna see a card for the player that I just drafted who's like an X Factor or something like this. Tie me in to my franchise. Bring me into my franchise. Show me something that I can show others or just to make it more interesting. And I don't even care if you microtransaction franchise, but just stop forcing mutt on me. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get into the actual video. Okay, well, now that I have that out of my system, I feel like we can get into the video. This video is going to be a, a bit of a hybrid video. It's going to be a let's talk about Madden 24, some of the things that are working that's not working. It's also going to lay the foundation for my new streaming series with my franchise. So this first one is going to be a lot about just kind of my setup. What am I doing with sliders? What am I doing with the league settings? How are we handling things like stadium relocation and, and teams building new stadiums and things like that? We're going to get a little bit deeper in just to understanding the salaries of the NFL and, and how you can navigate that to ensure success for the present, but also the future. And perhaps most importantly, we're going to be talking about ex extinguishing some Madden myths, such as quote unquote bad AI or quote unquote progressive fatigue or injuries not working and all this other stuff that in my opinion are a little bit mythical when it comes to madden i just i don't believe everything i'm seeing hearing and reading about people complaining about this game i don't think it's exactly what we think and i also don't think it's broken so there's going to be elements of that kind of sprinkled in so sit back relax it's going to be a bit of a hybrid video where yes we're talking about my franchise but at the end of the day we're talking about madden and I'm going to be showing you how I get things ready for a successful franchise mode. So let's dive in. I'm going to spend a little bit of time going through just my setup. We've sped up the video here. I have a lot of people who ask about how I set up my franchise, whether that's being an owner, being a coach, even just down to how I pick my team. So this is just me going through and doing that whole process. First thing I can say is just spend a little time thinking about what team you want to be. You're, you're kind of locked in in a lot of ways once you pick a team. And some of that's really easy if it's just, you're just picking your favorite team. But I try to go with something realistic. For me, it really came down to a team that maybe is dealing with a real ownership change in real life, or at least no, no one's really dealing with that right now. But maybe there's been some rumors about it in the future or whatever. And I saw five teams that seemed to have that, with the Saints being one of them. I think the other two were uh, the Bears, Green Bay, of course, who doesn't technically have an owner, and Seattle, and I'm forgetting the other one. Oh, the Chargers. So I, didn't, I went with the Saints, and I'll explain later in the video why I picked them, and even why I ended up going with owner mode. But the idea here is just wanting to have a little bit more control. So... These, of course, are the settings that I'm going through. You can really do this however you want. I have people ask all the time what I'm using, so that's why I'm sharing it. But again, these are your settings. I just own it just to kind of understand. I, I think understanding what you're doing is probably the most important part. I do have difficulty for trade and free agency set to high or very hard or whatever that was. So again, just trying to make it a little bit more challenging for me. And so... Everything else you can see here, it's, again, it's it's pretty straightforward, but I am asked about it a lot, which is why I wanted to show it. But in the end, once you get this set up, spend a little time, try to familiarize yourself with what these settings are. These here, the X Factor Superstar and Star Dev Players, this comes straight from Funky Corm on Operation Sports, who I'm gonna talk about later in the video. But he's done some really nice 10-year simulations to ensure that the league stays really nice and balanced into the future. And so I really recommend using that set. And you'll see, again, you'll hear more about that in the video. I like 53 minimum roster size just to ensure that the teams are fielding full rosters. But other than that, you can jump on in and then there's lots more to talk about after that. So here we are, start of a brand new franchise post patch. I've decided to go with the New Orleans Saints, which I'll explain later in the video as to why that is. But I wanna continue with our league setup and just show you how I get things set up the way that I like so that we're getting the best results, not just short term with gameplay, but long term with player regression, player progression and things like that. So I'm looking at Funky Corm's Madden 24 XP sliders, which are up on Operation Sports. So shout out to him. 
and he has done a lot of this legwork for us already and you've already seen me set up the number of star players that we're going to see superstar and x-factor players and so on but here is where you're going to want to go through and adjust these defensive or i'm sorry offensive progressive sliders your defensive ones special teams it gets into regression and progression that's based on just the player's age so there's a lot here that you want to just take a moment to go through and do so i'm going to do that now and I will speed up the video, but essentially I'm just looking at the thread on Operation Sports from Funky Corm, and I will put these in. Now that we have the XP slider set up, you can go in and pick the gameplay sliders you want. Now, while I don't recommend using any other XP sliders out of Funky Corm, I will say for a gameplay sliders, you can use whatever you want. I do not have a slider set this year. I'm kind of taking a slider sabbatical from Madden. I have been looking around at others in the slider community for Madden and seeing what they're doing. And the set that I do like is Kane's 21, who is again, also on Operation Sports in the slider section for Madden. So check his out if you want. I use those pretty close, but they're not 100% match, but it is pretty darn close. So huge shout out to him for really, really competitive sliders. Fair warning, they're all Madden and they are gonna scare you when you first put them in because you're gonna see things like the CPU pass coverage being at 98 on all Madden. Like that's crazy, right? Not as bad as you think. It really, really forces you to play this game intelligently and I just really love them. So that's what I'm gonna put in here, but again, while I don't recommend using a different set of XP sliders or even the default, you can do what you want really with the gameplay sliders. There's lots out there, so pick one that fits you. But I would say try not to pick a slider set that rewards your bad decisions. Try to get better at the game. And I think by picking a more difficult slider set, it kind of forces you to do that a little bit. New this year to Madden are the draft class strengths. And this is a pretty cool thing. Having said that, I don't mess with it simply because I'm using Funky Corm's XP sliders. And to me, it's too many moving parts if I come in and start using these. But I know I've seen others who are using like a random number generator to kind of decide year to year. And, and that's pretty cool. So, I mean, just do what you want with this really. But it's here, 
just know you have some different options you can sort through for different positions and you can change it year to year even this will only impact when a draft class is generated by the game and it only happens when the draft class first appears which i guess is in week two of the regular season so make sure you have this set how you want before then a quick note on something I'm doing a little bit different this year is I'm actually disabling trades at least for the first few weeks, maybe the first month of the season. I'm looking at the NFL transaction list right now. We just finished week four of the NFL season and there are no trades since the start of the regular season. There hasn't been any. Of course, Madden, and I'm not sure if it's just because it's the first season and you have basically a computer game trying to sort out rosters is really what's happening. but. I seem to think that we get a lot of trades like this that happen even in future seasons. So for me, I'm going to turn it off. Maybe after the first month, I'll turn it on. Certainly before the trade deadline, I do want teams to have a chance to make trades. But I think for now, we're going to keep this disabled. So now we have a lot of the settings and the general setup established for the league. I want to talk a little bit about just my approach. And some of that's really just trying to be patient with some things. I know a lot of times, especially in owner mode like I'm doing this year, you're going to want to jump in and upgrade or build a new stadium or relocate your team. But really try to look at that from a larger league picture. And what I mean by that is like, yeah, you can make an argument the Saints could really do any of these things because the stadium is pretty bad. It's old. It needs a lot of updates. And it, yeah, you could go on and on making an argument for that. But also try to pay attention. I mean, you are essentially the commissioner of your league as well. And so even though it's just you playing in it, I like to really just try to keep an eye on what's going around the league. And by the way, this is part of how I picked the Saints. I had narrowed it down to a top five list of what I saw as like realistic ownership changes situations. And the Saints were the lowest overall ranked team when I went into this screen here. And that's not the only reason. I try to look at some other things like fan happiness. Obviously, if you're trying to sell a product and your fans can't stand it, that's gonna create a business issue. And so while the Saints were on my list of potential teams that maybe could be for sale, it just made a lot of sense. Also, some of the other teams are looking at, I think just their, their team value was just so much higher. And in this little fictional world where I somehow came up with money to buy an NFL team, I figured that make it even just remotely realistic, I would try to buy a, a team on the cheap that may have popped up and so that's where I went with the Saints. But a reason I go to this screen after showing you the stadium importance or the stadium quality is that you can sort by stadium quality when you're in owner mode and you can look and see which teams are in need of a stadium most. And it just so happens that the next two teams up in real life that are getting stadium, I believe new stadiums, if not at least renovations, I forget now, but neither of these teams are relocating but these two teams are getting stadiums. And so you can start to look ahead. And please note in owner mode, these changes happen immediately. If you build a new stadium in week three, I don't know why they did it this way now, but it just happens in week three, you'll have a new stadium. So be really careful when you do it. There's no undo of this uh, unless you're playing offline and you can save it. So be really careful there. And so what I'm looking at, just to give you an example, is like, okay, I'll probably get these two new stadiums here, but I think it's like 2026 when it happens. And then really the next team, as I look at the stadium quality and maybe the team popularity, is if I see a team that's like in the 30s for both of these, hmm, that's interesting. Maybe that's a team we look to relocate, certainly maybe get them next in line for a new stadium. But if this still looks like this in a year, two, three years, whatever it is, I might look and, and understand too, I'm not looking to make some crazy change. It might be moving the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to Orlando or something like that, just to see what it does, just to see. So you also need to focus on not just being the owner of your team, but really being the commissioner around the league because frankly, the game's just too stupid to, to do a lot of it on its own well. Probably get into this sooner than I have in this video, but you're gonna wanna take a look at your roster. There's a few ways you can do this. You can, of course, click on a roster, which is just going to show your players by position level. You can look at your depth chart, but you don't get as much freedom in like looking at the player card in depth chart. And you can do a just lineup, which is kind of like a hybrid of this, those two. But really, I, I think where I like to look is actually in the team salaries page. And the reason is it just gives you a bigger picture of things. I don't really care about my depth chart just yet. I can go in and adjust that or I can make up a rule to let my coach handle that, whatever. But I like to see here because it really lets you kind of future plan for your team. And so I can look and see and go, oh, wow, Derek Carr is getting a absolutely massive raise coming up here. Maybe that puts in play trying to move him. But you also need to look and say, oh, well, if I move him, I'm getting a $53.3 million penalty because we're paying out the bonus that we promised to this player from the Saints, not from his next team. You don't trade a player's bonus. 
And so we also have a pretty expensive backup, at least in Madden dollars, and Jameis Winston. And so you can just get a little bit clearer picture. For instance, you can also look and say, okay, well, we have two running backs. One's an 86, one's an 85. Two really good running backs on this team. Of course, Kamara um, is very well known. Uh, Jamal Williams is a fan favorite when he was here in Detroit. They're both the same age. And you might be saying like, well, okay, which one's more valuable? Well, it really depends because here, of course, Jamal Williams is making far less than Kamara. And we all know the conversations around paying running backs, even though Kamara is kind of a unique kind of a hybrid sort of player and a very focal point of the offense, obviously. But you can make an argument like, well, if you needed to save money, this is an opportunity to do it, certainly down the road here as you're looking at $4 million worth versus close to 30. But again, you got to keep that penalty in mind. Maybe where it comes into play a little bit more is when you look at a situation like this, where we have two receivers, one's a 75, one's a 74. Uh, Shahid is 25 years old, so he's a little bit younger than Smith. But where it really stands out here is this dollar amount. Now, if you needed to clear cap space, and we're good, we have 22 million in cap space right now, maybe this is an area we look to move because we could just move Shahid up and, and very quickly, he's going to probably be a 75 overall later in the season. And he can function just fine as a receiver three if we needed to, to cut money or, or adjust our budget or something like that. So I'm probably not going to do that on this team because I like to have at least four functional, useful receivers on a team that I can rotate in. So just wanted to show you that as an example. So just keep an eye on salaries. And really, I think the best way to really get that initial first look at your roster is on this team salaries page. And of course, you can do it for any team and just kind of look around the league. And maybe if you want to take a little bit more control, you can go through and, and help a team by using your secondary profile inviting yourself to the league with that profile and then going in and maybe making some adjustments if you see some major issues with other teams around the league. I'm going to work in a little aside here and it's in response to a lot of things I've seen on social media about the game being broken or blocking not working right or my receivers being morons and 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 I get it like I said I understand that Madden is not the perfect game and it, it needs to work in certain areas but I do think we're a little too quick to just jump to conclusions about the game being stupid when it's actually the opposite, in my opinion. I actually like that sometimes you're seeing your blocker stand there lost. And it, guys, it happens in real life. And it happens to the AI teams too. And the way you combat it, it's not just by complaining on social media. You fix it here in your talent trees. And so here we have a talent tree increase with uh, the Saints here, secure the line. So you can work on this, I guess, badge called line vision, where it boosts the awareness of your offensive line by two. And the next tier would be by three and so on. And you can do these different things in combination with other things like pass block finesse for your guards, run block finesse for your tackles and so on. This is where you can improve some of that. And it's, it's kind of like a backwards design in a way in that the game, like, yeah, if you just play it out of the box and you don't really look too deeply into this sort of stuff, especially when you're in franchise mode, you're going to say, oh, look at this replay. This blocking's broken. The guy just stood there. But have you worked on this? Or is all you're doing working on the speed of your receivers or whatever because you're just running four verts all day? You need to look a little deeper under the hood because to me, the, the backwards design part of it is that they are kind of building it to be a little stupid until you give it the attention that it needs in certain areas. And the beauty of it is, is you can't always fix every little thing that you want to do, or if you do, it's going to take a long time. So really look at this talent tree. Don't just work on improving the XP of your first round draft pick quarterback or receiver or something like that. That's fine if you want to do it, but it's going to be at the expense of some other areas like improving the awareness of your offensive line or improving the the, the strength of your defensive line and, and being able to disengage from blocks and things like that. So it, it all kind of comes as, as a give and take. You have to really kind of pick and choose what you need to work on. So think about your team identity as you're going through this talent tree for your head coach and your coordinators because it matters. And it's a lot more than just getting XP for your fast receiver that you want to just throw bombs to all day. That's not football. And I think it's great that Madden is combating that a little bit. And I do think it's intentional and I don't think it's bad design. I think it's actually really good design by the Madden team. I'm gonna stick with the trend of things that I'm seeing people talk about on social media, Reddit, Twitter, and so on about 
progressive fatigue and it being broken and whatnot. I don't think it is. I think the understanding from the community is what's needing adjusting. And what I mean is I know a lot of people want to come in here and just rock full pads all the time because we're obsessed with earning XP. And, and that's fair. And that's kind of how the game's made us be over the years. But that has changed, especially in the last couple years of Madden. If you're at 100% overall fatigue for your defense or offense, you can run full pads. There's really not going to be any issues. You might run a little bit higher risk of injury, but you're going to be okay. Your players aren't going to go into the game all fatigued and crazy. For me, and your mileage may vary, if I'm even at 99%, anything below 100, I switch to half pads. I don't care if it's the whole season, during your bye week, maybe we can get a more padded practice and that kind of thing. But this is a lot of, I mean, the NFL don't, they don't just run like four practices a week in full pads. Like that's just how you get guys hurt. And so I think Madden's doing the right thing. I think what we need is a little time to adjust to that understanding of progressive fatigue's not broken. We're just trying to overuse it too much. This kind of goes along with another point, so bear with me here as I switch screens. In a similar fashion, progressive fatigue, and, and it, it's a similar argument when I hear people talking about injuries. Like, oh, it's, it's just way too high. There's way too many injuries. And I disagree, and I have my injury setting at 50, and if anything, I would still raise it. But you need to be smart about it. You need to understand what you're complaining about or maybe what is getting you frustrated. So, for instance, with my Saints team, I wanted some more depth at corner. Specifically, we really needed a corner two. I have a, a very strong corner one in Lattimore. After that, I have some depth guys. And I was like, ah, I really wouldn't mind getting another starter. And I was looking at Byron Jones because he's a pretty good fit for what I want to do. And as I'm looking through this, I say, okay, he's 30, but that's okay. He's just going to come in for a year, play corner two, and, and this is good. Uh, we play a lot of zone coverage here. He's a great press corner. So he's going to be a really nice complement to Lattimore. And so a lot of you are just going to click over here and hit sign. And there we go. And then he's going to get hurt. And you're going to wonder why. And you're going to complain that the slider is too high. But it's because you didn't look here. His injury rating is a 77 to go along with him being 30 years old, which, which isn't terrible. But this dude is going to get hurt. Now, if you want to sign him for depth, he comes off the bench. Maybe he's OK. But really, anything that's below an 85, to me, that's like injury prone. You're running a risk. It gets even higher when you see a number like 77, obviously, and it gets even higher when that player is trying to start for you. It is just too many dice rolls to just understand kind of how the game works. Your dice rolls are going to come up snake eyes too often with a player like this, and I avoided signing him. And the corner that I went with instead is a 29-year-old, basically the same age, 78 overall, Anthony Brown, who is on the Steelers practice squad. Now, he's four point low, overall lower. And so you can certainly make the argument he's not as good of a player. He doesn't have the same press. His zone isn't as high. But he's going to be able to stay on the field more often than not. And the, the old saying goes, the best ability a player can have is availability. If you're hurt, you're in zero overall, essentially. So again, just a really small example to kind of go along with some of that progressive fatigue, injuries and that sort of thing. I don't think anything's broken. And trust me, guys, I understand. Like, I'm frustrated with Madden over the years, too. But I like that they're kind of going this route. I, I just wish they were a little bit more, wish they would take some time to explain it more and more of like their, their dev diaries and things like that. But I think it's working well. And I think it's fun. I like the extra challenge. Okay, there's still a ton I want to get to in this video, but I do want to keep it relatively short. So you're just seeing some screenshots of some things that I, I wanted to talk about, but I'm just not going to really get into in depth. But if you're curious to see some of this, go ahead and pause the video. Of course, you're seeing the depth chart here of just really how the team shaped up for week one. We did sign some other players other than just Brown. And you can really just see what we, we tried to do. We spent about half the salary cap we had. And the idea was to just try and bring in some depth. I really like to fill out, especially with a realistic injury uh, slider, I want to fill out some depth to this team. You're seeing on this screen here, we, we have some financial problems on this team. So luckily, everything we did is pretty short term, of course, one year deals. But we have some issues to work out in the future with this team. So we're going to be talking about that on future episodes for sure. Because, I mean, what are we going to do with Derek Carr, who's what, a, a 78 overall quarterback making $50 million in a couple of years? That's scary. I've stuck with the head coach. I've stuck with the assistant coaches. We've st stuck with their scheme. I feel like that's realistic to kind of let them do their thing. And I just happen to agree. I, I can work with the multiple power run. It's not my top choice, but I do like the base 4-3 defense a lot. And so I've been in practice mode going through as best I can, trying to get familiar with the playbook so far. So 
team's pretty healthy overall. I, I feel like we're okay. Again, looking at the Titans, who's our first week opponent, same thing. Pretty darn healthy across the board. Financial stuff, it really just kind of just keeping an eye on things early on. I, I'm a big believer of like when you come into a new role, even if it's real life or a video game, just kind of take your time, get to know a little bit of what's going on first before you just start making humongous changes overnight. We have some pretty popular players on the team, which I thought was pretty cool. So I'm not used to seeing this many players with a really, really high popularity and personality. So that'll be kind of fun to watch. And again, we're just, uh, I don't know, we're, we're a team that can really go either direction. If you know me, I love rebuilds like this. I don't, well, I should say I don't like rebuilds at all. I like middle of the road teams because you can really go in any direction. But there's some talent on this team. Demario Davis is a monster. Marshawn Lattimore, of course, just is going to be a total lockdown corner for us, one would hope. Kamara, who I mentioned, is really a, a huge focal point for the offense. So we're really excited to see him. Cameron Jordan, who doesn't want an edge threat who can also play pretty well against the run. Of course, in week one, Derrick Henry is, is just a focal point. He's part of our game plan for sure. Jeffrey Simmons, part of our offensive game plan, basically trying to run away from him, literally. Uh, and Kevin Baird I, is a, a player we really have to keep an eye on. I think their secondary can be vulnerable, but it's something we do need to be careful of with him. If you want to see the full transaction log of what we did, you can see these different screenshots here that just kind of show you, again, nothing big. you got players like Robert Quinn, Andre Roberts, who's signed to be a kick returner and mentor for Olave. So a lot of that. I, I'm going to talk a lot about mentorship and stuff in the future. But again, it was really just kind of getting, just laying some groundwork for this team. But I'm super excited for week one. I'm super excited for this new franchise stream, and I appreciate you guys being here to see it all. Well, if you haven't done so by now, give the video a like, follow the channel, etc., all that YouTube stuff. I'm on Twitter at MikeLow47. I really appreciate you checking out the video, and I'm excited because I got a week one game here. I feel like we're prepared, but I don't know. It's going to be a tough matchup, I think tougher than it may look there with a 79 overall Titans team. But that'll be in episode two. I appreciate you all checking out the video, and I'll see you next time.